What's up? Welcome to a new episode of Movie Schmovie. Um, this is episode number 430. My name is Steve. I'm one of the co-hosts of the show. And as always, I'm joined by... Rod. Ribbed. Yeah, obviously ribbed. <laughs> <laughs> and John. <laughs> uh, good to see you guys. How's it going? Pretty good. Oh, I wanted to say thank you so much to the people that have uh, been watching the YouTube uh, channel, we 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 got this. We got this crazy influx in viewers, like eleven thousand more views this month than last month. <laughs> it's super weird, and and a lot of that is like the shorts, which lead people to watch the the longer version for a right. little lo- more, which is what we want. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we're you know John kind of threw around some ideas, and I think we're going to try to use the shorts. For some like specifically things that aren't going to be included in the podcast, which is going to be really cool. So yeah, just um, some little quick topics that we yeah, we, yeah. we could blow up into a whole segment, but we'll do a shorty version of it. Yeah, yeah, a shorty version. Um, and you asked how we're doing, Steve. I feel like yeah. tonight's a perfectly normal night in America. Nothing we're special. Just, we're just here to talk about an old movie. You know, <laughs> kick back, shoot the shit, chop it up, as they say. Just and standard, standard, standard Tuesday night. The standard Tuesday, first Tuesday in November, you know, it's right. just like a classic Tuesday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now, and, uh, just to, just because we don't know what we don't know what the tone is going, we don't even know what we're going to feel like when we post this episode in a couple. It could days. be the last episode yeah. we ever post. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It, this could be the two day period, but the period between recording this and posting it could be the two day period in which we are radicalized. And the tone of the show changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, but yeah. I'd be fine with that. Because <clears throat> you never know. You yeah. know what? We're gonna stay positive, though. I think. No, I think that's that what this show is for. But between us, we are essentially elements of Captain Planet's rings. We're Earth, Wind, Water, Heart, all together. Uh, and I think that things are gonna work themselves out one way or another. We are resilient people. Mm-hmm. We're resilient people, so it's going to work itself out. So I will just say this: that Ronald, Steve, and I all hope it goes a certain way, and yeah. and we would be sure. willing to bet that most of our listeners hope it goes that way too. So mm-hmm. so we're all together. <laughs> in, yeah. in that, in all that seven of us, we're all yes, in the same right, boat. Right, right. There's plenty of room in the boat for all seven of us, right. viewers and listeners. Um, <laughs> um, but I don't know. Like I yeah, I think that uh, the idea that something like this, I I was kind of viewing this today as almost like an escape hatch. Like I was I was a little worried when we when we realized when we were going to be recording this episode was like right, right when election results are starting to come in. But I thought you know what, I don't really like. I always feel like I'm kind of climbing the walls, waiting for more more firm news anyway. At this point, so it's kind of nice to have a little a little escape. Um, yeah. But just in case people think, well, why are Ronald and Steve and John not acknowledging the moment we're in? It's uh, well, we just did, and yes, we're all we're all sick to our stomachs, and uh, and uh, you know, feeling it right with you. <clears throat> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yes, I like your hopeful tone, Ronald. I like the idea oh, that, yeah. you know, we'll, 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 uh, I, I didn't watch Captain Planet, but that sounded very, very <laughs> hopeful. <laughs> Seems like a good guy. Wasn't there a time oh. where there was supposed to be a Captain Planet movie and Tom Cruise was going to play him? Is that something that wow. was really. That would have been so good. I would have loved that's, that. That's wow. No, yeah, that's, that sounds interesting. As Captain Planet. One. I'm just going to see. I can hear your key saying Captain Planet. Oh, like, you know what it is? Uh, he, he was originally going to do the voice of Captain Planet on the show. And, oh, wow. And it says here he even recorded a few episodes that never made it on air. Damn. Whoopi Goldberg's one of the voices on there. So that, that makes sense. That there's a lot of star power. And if anybody wonders about the veracity of that fact I just shared, it came straight from Reddit. So you know it is <laughs> gold. Pristine. The Have you ever seen... Standard. Have you seen Don Cheadle's Captain Planet? It's so good. Is it like a comedy sketch kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I have seen that. Just yeah. him painted blue is funny enough. <laughs> <laughs> and being disgruntled adds a whole different layer to it. So it's it's, it's really entertaining. Um, I love Don Cheadle, by the way. Very recently, I was just thinking about him for some reason, and I uh, I realized, you know, I love Don Cheadle. He's one of those yeah. guys. I wish he was in Me more. Too stuff i don't maybe i'm just missing the stuff he's been in lately <clears throat> uh my my dad used to call him uh the character from 
Uh, Devil in a Blue Dress. Uh, Mouse. Mouse. Yeah, He's Mouse. like, yes, Mouse is going to be in that new movie. I'm like, oh. Well, I mean, that was when I first remember seeing him was Mouse. And I remember being like, like Denzel was kind of killing it in that movie. And then someone actually stole it from him. You know? Yeah. I, I was blown away at that. So That's the first time I ever saw that. Like, somebody really stole that movie from mm -hmm. Denzel. And that's, that's a rarity. That is a... I, I would even throw in... Because I actually loved him uh training day. Uh mm -hmm. I know that I know that people like Denzel in it, but uh Ethan Hawk, man, he's doing something in that movie that's just very like I like it. I like it. The more the more I see training day, the more I like Ethan Hawk in that movie and what he's doing. I feel like you gotta that, be that was a, a turning point that. for me with Ethan Hawk. Like I liked yeah, him yeah. okay before that, but kind of feel like his mm. sort of sensitive poet, whatever he had going on. There were so many people that you know, you, you, you know me, I have a thing against cool guys, and so <laughs> Ethan Hawk was cool. Um, but I don't know. Training Day was around the time that I started noticing, like, oh, he's a he's a really good actor, and he yeah. was doing something a little bit more. I don't know, more. Of, I felt like it was a little bit more of a character. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but, but but I was you know I have probably been unfair to his his earlier stuff I, I just feel like the goatee the i bet like he hand rolled his own cigarettes <laughs> yeah he could probably spot on actually yeah, yeah. i think you're 100 percent accurate <laughs> he watched denzel clap a man's dick with two guns together <laughs> i'll never forget that i'm like who wrote this who wrote this script this is psychotic Psychotic, psychotic. You know, I was thinking about that recently when I was writing something, and I realized I don't write shit like that. And I thought about how fucking sick or angry you have to be, at least in the moment, to write something like that, where you're like, not just, oh, this person dies, but like, hmm, what can we do to the guy's dick? <laughs> yes. I fucking kick his dick around a little bit. Like, <laughs> what? It's just insane, man. Oh, yeah. So, oh Denzel. Oh, Denzel. Speaking oh, of man, gosh. Gladiator Two looks good, and yeah. early word for him is looking very promising. For yeah. I mean, he said that he just wanted, Oscar he wanted to wear a dress and have fun. It's just it's so fun to hear him say that, man. I can't. I mean, have you ever? It's super fun. So yeah, yeah. Do you think maybe he's one of those guys who? Because I remember years and years ago, Harrison Ford was on Conan O'Brien, and he basically said he wanted to be in like a Fairly Brothers type movie, but no one oh. comes to him with that kind of thing. And I feel like in recent years, we've seen him get more of those slightly more offbeat parts. Do yeah. you think Denzel's one of those guys who doesn't get... I think so. Like who, maybe people are afraid to offer him something that they think he would think was beneath him or that he would yeah. think was silly or something. But you know, you hear about like people's management keeping them away from certain things that they yeah. might actually be interested yep. in doing. I wonder if Denzel would come to play uh, on a lot more uh, offbeat stuff than you'd think. <clears throat> did you, I mean, did you hear what he said about the MCU? Like that famous line, like it was like three, four years ago. They're like, why have you been in an MCU movie? He's like, no one ever asked me. <laughs> Is that like a thing? It's like literally Disney hasn't reached out to one of the best actors of all time. It's like, yeah. I'm pretty sure he'd want to play in, in the same places Chiwetel Ejiofor, for Tom Cruise and all these amazing yeah. fucking peoples. Yeah. Right. No, it's interesting that, that yeah, I've, I've heard that a few times from different actors of that stature about different things. And it always reminds me of when like the supermodel says they never get asked out or whatever, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, you do hear just as many stories where someone finally gets the yeah. offer and says, Oh, I, I love this property. I would have done this before. I didn't know my, you know, I didn't know I was yeah. being protected from these kind of B movie offers or whatever. Um, but I bet get, I bet you do get a little sick of like, even if you enjoy being treated like the 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 king of the set. I bet you do get sick of only getting to play parts that are sort of exalted or enshrined right. or something like that. You know, I think um, particularly for an actor of color, I remember hearing people say that you don't get offered some of the some of the more fun, wacky parts, because people think, well, they wouldn't do this, you know? This mm, isn't serious yeah. enough for an actor like Denzel. <clears throat> yeah, this, yeah, you're right. I think, I think, I thought, I didn't think about that. Cause like, there's, there's always a chance that somebody could be like, hey, do you wanna be a testicle in this, this Kevin Smith movie? It's like, <laughs> I'm a black actor. Why would I wanna be? <laughs> right. You take the chance of being like, oh, oh no, I'm upset. 
<laughs> right. It's like you Washington. don't want to, but, but that means you don't ask, that means in the end, it seems like people, you know what I'm saying? It's an accidental, yeah. it's a form of cowardice, I guess, not to ask right. someone at that point. Um, That's nuts. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Gladiator 2, I, I like, people have been mad about like the accents and the music in the trailer and saying it's anachronistic, but I'm like, oh, Jesus, people get over it. Like, yeah. do they think that when you're watching Lord of the Rings or something, that all of those instruments that are used in the score are of the era? Like, I don't understand that that logic. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm thinking about. It's like a, a, a electric piano, and it's like, yeah. that, was, that didn't exist back or then. Or even just a piano. Like, I don't see that many pianos in the Shire. Maybe I'm wrong. That's hilarious. So. I was trying to remember. I, I can't remember if I saved this. I wanted to tell you. Like, it's relating to what you just said, but I think it was maybe Drew McQueenie who posted something about, like... I'm gonna fuck this up but like it was based it was i think it may have been in reference to gladiator or maybe something another like period piece uh of, of film or tv that's coming up or is already out but it was something along the lines of like it's perfectly okay for a film to be made without being historically accurate but it's also perfectly okay for a historian of the topic to say that it's not like that it's not historically accurate like they they can be two different conversations right mm. and like it was like I, i'm just the way he phrased it was obviously way cleaner but it was like that's a really interesting and, and it's I, I totally agree with it is that like the conversation around the movie and the criticism of it being historically accurate is one thing it was maybe that film critics criticizing a film or, or hating on a movie because of its historical accuracy Mm -hmm. is 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 leaning too far away from the entertainment element of a movie being made to entertain people right where like a historian about that topic that's who is qualified or more qualified to be critical of that element of the movie making yeah and things like that it like you mentioning the music and the accents and things like right, that right. it was all framed around those things and it was like yeah that makes a whole lot of sense to think about things like that. Well, I mean, it, it feels it's rather disingenuous uh, for a person to not like a movie because of uh, the music is anachronistic. I mean, that's right. fine. It's just like it feels like, yeah, you're not you're not meeting this movie on its own terms if you say that. Totally. But if if you are under the assumption that people are getting their information about history from the movie, then it's like, yes, let's step back and and. Neil deGrasse Tyson this, you know, and say, well, that's not how it would work. But I mean, that's a great example of the, where it bothers me is like when a Marvel totally movie would agree. come out and he would yeah. say, radiation would not give you the power to do that. And it's like, <laughs> Neil, <laughs> nobody, <Sir>. thinks, <laughs> nobody thinks it does. No one's like blasting themselves <laughs> with gamma rays because of this movie. <laughs> But I understand. Oh, I understand the compunction. I mean, again, I, I can be that. I can. I can be the person who wants to make the correction. So I get the. I get sure. the impulse. It's just you have to be assuming that people are walking around going, "Well, this is the way it works. This is all real." <laughs> right. Um, but I also feel like the original Gladiator was kind of like a throwback to sword and sandal epics of the '50s and stuff. It wasn't necessarily a historical serious film. It was more of a fun pulpy film. So to me, Gladiator Two should be a similar kind of throwback to like a big budget, big, big stars. You know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, on the topic real quick, we'll be able to see that and review that in a timely manner. Yes, very soon. Because we'll be able to see uh, the advanced screening of that. So I know we're all excited to see it. If they haven't like locked down all the movie theaters. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. I think they'll reopen them for Gladiator 2. Right, they will. I hope so. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to be a gladiator. Kick somebody in the there chest. There you go. Hey, get, get your sword and sandals out, Ron. <laughs> Um, let's get into require viewing, John. You, you, you're, you're up. You, you, uh, you picked the blob. Yes. What, what year is it? 80... 88. Eight. Eight. Okay, let's see. Tell the, us more. Yes. Well, I mean, this was a movie that I remember seeing when it came out and it was, as I mentioned last week, um, mm -hmm. it was when I was definitely in the throes of, I believe, Gore Zone and Fangoria were two magazines that I regularly read and picked up. And right. so I was really into the sort of effects side of things and um, and the how they did it aspect of, of a lot of uh, horror movies. And so this was one that was coming out, I think it came out in the summer. Um, let me just look at that release date. 
uh it was released august 5th yeah i, I somehow i remembered that but it, you know it was so it was part of that time of like oh this is a movie that's actually coming to the theater often the movies that would be featured in those magazines would you'd finally see them on v- vhs like years later or they would come to a few theaters but they wouldn't always be played in theaters but this was like a big enough movie yeah. that it was actually coming to uh theaters like when it was released and so i remember going to see it and it was uh you know uh, i think it was because it was this kind of movie and I was into horror movies and I was into the gore aspect of it, I think that it was a movie that was a real home run for me at the time. And when I see it today, I recognize there are things about it that do make it like like kind of interesting and surprising for the type of movie that it was at the time. And that I think still there's still sort of a couple of turns in it that I think you might not be expecting uh, if you think you know the rhythms of this this kind of movie. So I think the fact that it's co-written by Frank Darabont who's no slouch, There's, you can definitely see there's like a structural strength to this. And I think sometimes when we talk about movies of this era, um, uh, we talk about just how on the scripting level, there's a, there's, I don't know, there's a, there's a clearness and a cohesion to it that, that feels, I don't know, I'm nostalgic for that kind of storytelling sometimes. And so it was fun to watch a movie yeah. like this that I, like I said, I haven't seen it. I don't know if I've watched it that much. I know that I've watched it at home at least once, but I think that was shortly after it came out on video. So it's been about you know, 30 years or something for me to watch this movie. So it's weird how much it was all there. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember all of this stuff. Um, but uh, but still, I think I was almost unprepared for, like, oh, yeah, the, the stuff that's really gross in it is really gross. Like, there's a couple of things in it that are just really, like, disturbing imagery of what happens to a human body when it comes into contact with the blob um, that is still, like, from a practical effect standpoint, I think would hold up if someone used the same effect in a film today so um i don't mean there's there'll there'll be some fun stuff to talk about in terms of the plot back and forth but i guess i'll go ahead and throw it to you guys what did you think of it steve you say you've watched it on a fairly regular basis uh over the years but ronald this was a first time viewing for you right um turns out it wasn't but let me tell you why it's been a while it's been a while so um back in the day in maryland there was a show a block of time uh on sundays called nightmare theater um, and I watched, I mean, this is no exaggeration because they, they normally had a block of two or three films, I probably watched about 70, 80 horror films with my cousin. Uh, and it's probably, I mean, two movies, three movies came out every, every, we came on every time and we'd watch them all. And what wound up happening was I didn't know the names of these movies. I just watched a bunch of movies. And so what mm-hmm. I thought was the blob was the stuff what I thought was a stuff was a blob. And I saw both of them because they were on Nightmare Theater. I distinctly remember the blob, especially as I got into it. Some of the special effects, like the, the I guess, the purple stuff shooting in up the ceiling and kind of yeah. spreading out these visuals that were, like, insane. And uh, the first time you see what it does to somebody's body when you get kind of covered in it. And the grab, I remember all that stuff. But I didn't, I thought that was the stuff. And I thought that the... Well, you know, vice versa. So, so if um, listeners don't know, the stuff is another '80s kind of a, a schlockier, more kind of goofy movie. Yeah. But it was about like a wasn't it like an ice cream like product that people were buying that was killing them? But it was a similar, yeah. you know, it was a riff on the Blob, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah. And it came was, out a couple years before the remake, right? Like, so it came out like two, three years, three, three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it came out before the remake, but also the 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 earlier blob existed in the world mm-hmm. and this was kind of a little more sci-fi east the stuff but um yeah i i just remember how it felt to see this big blob that looked like you could outrun it eventually capture people in in mysterious ways it just you think you it looks like it's it's about a yard away from you and then it just reaches and grabs you You're like oh this thing has multiple dimensions to it it's like very smart it's it's a yeah it can like it can like projectile pieces <laughs> yeah. and pull you or grab yeah. you or slow you down yeah, yeah. I know what you mean it, it just it shocked the shit out of me like that i remember as a kid being like i i'll run a blob and the blob would do something crazy. i'm like maybe i Maybe I couldn't know. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Like uh, I, I had sort of forgotten that part of it too. Like that, it's a. Yeah. I remember that it got bigger as it went along, and that that was kind of part yeah. of the horror of it is that eventually it'll catch you just because it's bigger, and it you know it can, yeah. you know. But um, the fact that it can suddenly just like 
shoot forth it, and, yeah. and yes it's the intelligence part of it because in my mind it was more of just an amoeboid shape rolling along that almost didn't have an intelligence and i hesitated to even think of it as sentient but watching this i was like oh no this fucker is like mad from the moment it pops out of that meteor or that satellite or whatever yeah. we're going to call that that you know we think at the beginning it's a meteor which i think is the way i don't really know the the 1958 film steve mcqueen film that this is a remake of i don't really yeah. know it that well i've seen it at least once but i think in that one it's a clear cut kind of like it came from outer space that's the explanation mm. so this movie makes you think it's doing that and then in the end we find out that it's a um a government uh, uh, project that they sent some bacteria into space, a mix of bacteria into space that got hit by space radiation and then crashed back down to Earth. And that's what made the blob. So it's like a more paranoid conspiracy theory approach to the sort of story, like in the, which is very 80s, you know, that's very much the sort of anti-authoritarian streak that was that was coming through <laughs> this, this type of film in the 80s. Um, but I, I didn't, I, I, because I didn't dig into the first one that much, I don't know if the first one was conceived as any kind of a metaphor for something. You know, you could almost see in the 50s that's some metaphor for like communism or something. Like, I don't know what they were thinking the blob was if it was not just a, a blob, because the original blob was originally, this is kind of a funny thing. Um, it was called, originally, there was a point where it was called the glob. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Um, and then they thought they couldn't use the glob because the comics, the comic strip Pogo, the artist Walt Kelly, who did Pogo, he had a storybook called The Glob, and they thought they couldn't use it, but I don't think that's quite true. Um, but it was also known in the script as The Mass, mm. which reminds oh. me of the, the Michael Myers being called The Shape in Halloween. You know, it's... Um, yeah. But, like, so they ended up calling it The Blob because... Um, uh, the screenwriter just referred to the monster as a blob kind of in a conversational way. And then that kind of, that kind of stuck. Um, but now that word just means, I mean, you don't even think about blob. I don't know. It's an interesting thing that now that word to me has always meant the blob. Whenever I hear the word blob, I picture, <laughs> the, you know, the, right. blob. the um, blob, blob. But that it was almost the glob uh, is, is kind of funnier. Um, but I don't know. I mean, Ronald, so you, now that you know that you've seen this, uh, do, mm -hmm. do you, do you think this movie, like the, you were talking about remembering seeing what it does to a human body. Do, do those effects kind of stand out to you or, or was there anything about the movie that stood out to you that wasn't part of what you remembered? It's crazy, man. Like it, it it's funny. Like I think about like video games, you know, how people do that stupid shit where they're like, here, here's, here's Nintendo 64. And here's me as a kid being like, these are the most realistic graphics I've ever seen in my life. And then they show like what it yeah. looked like. There's a reversal that's happening to me. Where I'm seeing things now, special effects now, and I'm like, that looks like shit. And I'm seeing old <laughs> movies, I'm like, this looks better than anything that I've seen in the past 10 years. And the special effects, I mean, while they are like, some of them are super over the top, you know, when it comes to some of the kills. Yeah. But the thing about that stuff is when, you know, when something gets upscaled, it gets bigger, or it gets on a bigger screen, we get on sharper screens it still looks great because it's all practical. It's no like, you know, when you see special effects, you see some of the weirdness with shadows and them not getting the lighting right when they place it on top of something. Mm -hmm. But practical stuff, it just feels like it's in it. Mm -hmm. It's in the environment. So that just holds up. It just looks incredible. It just, it, it ages so well. Yeah, and this movie uses I, a combination of like stop motion and miniatures and... <sighs> And yeah, everything. Cool. So I feel like what you're talking about, Ronald, is like they, they throw every practical trick at at this project. You know, like mm -hmm. just five mm -hmm. years later, you're getting Jurassic Park, you know, which is like another marriage Holy of effect shit. styles. But it's a totally different era in a way, you know, yeah. stepping into the CGI era. So it's interesting yeah. how many of these 80s movies that have gore in them are sort of like, oh, this is the height of practical effects work. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Th that that was where they were. Tr in fact, that's where they were kind of trying to live or die. Honestly, if these movies didn't have a lot of money money in the budget, one of the things was that was assumed was that the effects were part of the draw. Um, mm. No, I think you're I think you're dead on about that. That it's like there's something that it's almost like 
if an effect looks bad that's practical, it looked just as bad when it was new as it does now. But it looks yeah. real, yeah. sort of. But a CGI thing, it's a you're right, there's a deceptive thing of like, well, this doesn't really look real, but it's pretty cool. And that gets better yeah. over time. And so gradually, like early CGI can be some of the worst looking effects. <laughs> Yes. you've ever seen but what you so said is weird. very true now now that they're relying too much on cgi to, to bring across a movie there's some really slapdash or or maybe not stuff that looks bad but there's stuff that doesn't look real and doesn't feel yeah. real and that's what you're getting in a movie like this with the practical effects that feels kind of kind of real even when it's like a bad composite shot and like the the lighting on the like there's some really cool design shots that just don't look that great um the shot of them running down the hallway and it's the blobs on the ceiling running after him, but yeah, he's kind of right on top of yes. him. Like that stuff is really well designed, but the 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 compositing, like the lighting looks different on them than it does on the blob, and so it doesn't yeah. convince your eye. But you still feel what you're talking about, Ronald, the kind of the rush of seeing something physical happen. Yeah, it's so crazy looking. Well, Steve, did you have any new thoughts like this time, or just maybe share a little bit more about what it is that, that, that keeps this movie in your rotation? <clears throat> I, I, it's just so entertaining, man. Like it's so, it's so quick and fun. Like I've always felt like, you know, it's barely an hour and a half, you know, you get to meet the characters really quickly and early on in the film. Um, you know, you've got, you know, uh, Shawnee Smith and Kevin Dillon and, and his hair, Donovan Leach. And, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It just like, it, it, it just, you get, I love, I love the, I love the eighties movies. Like, Movies in this same conversation, the first one that comes to mind is like Night of the Creeps. Like you get right into the story of like what came to Earth. It's about to mess everything up, you know, mm -hmm. and like you got the old man running out of the car and they're on a date. And it's just like you don't know who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. Are you supposed to like Paul? Are you supposed to hate him? Is Brian the good guy? I don't know. I just I just love that quick character introduction. And um, of, of like of the, you're talking about you love the classic dynamic of the skinniest football player and the skinniest <laughs> biker guy having a face right. off, but it is classic it's like the, jock, jock the, versus the classic uh, outsider yeah. energy, you know, and it feels yes. very fifties, which is another way this movie feels like it's throwing back to the Absolutely. tone of the original. You're totally on, um, but yeah, I just feel like I love I love the way the movie just kind of continues to escalate the whole way through. You mentioned it, I think briefly last week when we were talking about like also not holding back on killing kids and mm -hmm. <laughs> like it just it just it just goes for it you know um and i i love the idea of you know the the government's interference in trying to control the blob and uh the no mercy that it takes on you know uh the doctors and the soldiers and it's just like it's just it's just it just escalates so much and I love the escalation of uh, like a creature feature like this. The idea of, you know, this creature basically, I think I was reading about this, like Frank Darabont talked about, uh, I think it was him and maybe Chuck Russell. They were saying like, basically the thing they agreed on from the jump was that it was basically be like an inside out stomach. That it basically would be acid oh on the outside, God. eat you, and it would make it grow. Oh, you know what? Because I was thinking this time what made it so gross to me was that it looked like a glistening, like, mucous membrane, like the yeah. inside of somebody, you know? Yeah. And I was, I was yeah. like, I was realizing that that was a very visceral reaction I was happening to, having it. to it. And then to I find that it. that's what they were actually thinking is amazing. That's great. Yeah, it is like an inside-out organ. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's just like, it's so cool. And I mean... um, you also like get the idea of like this kind of small town, you know, they go to the movie theater, you know, like John's background here, you know, you get to go, you know, to the pharmacy, you know, you just get that geography of the yes. town where everybody the football game yeah. crosses paths yeah. with each other. And it's just like, and how quickly it's all going to be, uh, you know, disrupted in this small town. Um, it's a little you bit like, do you like small towns. You guys like small towns. Love small it, towns. Yes. I Look, man, I, every time I go to like Frederick or something, I'm like, yeah. I want to stay here it's so Love bad. It. It's like everybody knows everybody. Hey, just go well, you, talk to Don. You talk about that place you always went to in PA, that air, the um, the bed and breakfast that you guys went to. Yes. And like how like quaint that town was. And like that, yeah, that kind of thing where like everybody sort of knows someone in the family or somebody's kid's kid. Uh, but it does a good job of setting that up, you know, in the movie. Like I kind of was getting that like from the jump, you. You know, you meet the siblings and their friends, and some of those friends don't make it. And you know, speaking of the kids, and uh, again, coming back to kids, you know, they just it, it just goes for it, man. Um, it's just I I just 
the word fun and entertaining is like just for a creature feature again you're talking about nightmare theater i remember like on usa this movie always played you know those afternoons saturday mm. afternoons they'd have these things playing uh and so many times i'd seen it and um yeah it always kind of comes to the top of my list like this and uh what what other ones like night of the creeps is one of my favorites yeah um killer clowns from outer space like just those silly fun what came to this earth and is about to ruin everything <laughs> and i just <laughs> love i love it i love it yeah you know night of the creeps is the second movie we've talked about in this episode that is happens to be on my master list of uh future required viewing uh possibilities so it's oh, interesting wow. Well, maybe I'll beat you to it. I don't yeah, know. Maybe you will. Um, you, can you guess what the first one is? We talked about the it. second movie that's mentioned on this podcast. The second episode that's been mentioned. Or second movie that's been mentioned in this episode. The stuff. The stuff. No, not the stuff. Um, it's too adjacent to the blob. <laughs> uh, what else did we talk about? Killer clowns from outer space. Mm-hmm. Devil in a blue dress, blue Gladiator. dress, blue dress, devil with the devil blue in a blue dress. dress. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that um, movie, I feel like, have we not talked about that movie before this podcast? I don't, I don't we, think we have. I, don't, wow. I think we've talked about it maybe maybe Just in a it, list show. Okay, yeah, We yeah, talked yeah. about something but i don't even know if yeah we have. okay um that's what but no i i, I love so much about what you were just saying steve the sort of small town thing like because i was saying i don't know if you heard me a second ago i said like haddonfield vibes is, right. yeah, yeah. It's, it, just as far totally. as the way the movie establishes and it's even the same part of the year they mentioned that it's around halloween or it's in october you get that feel oh, because the kid's like not gonna wear his jacket and he's like it's boiling oh, right. outside and she said it's october you know um that uh i i like the small town thing and ronald i, I like being in a small town for a minute, even if you're not staying there, if you just drive through, like if you're on a road trip and you're on your way home on a Sunday evening and you stop and you're in the little small town and you I see like, that. and it's like you see the person like closing the little bookshop at five o'clock and they're walking out. You picture you picture being on a block and working somewhere and knowing everybody and like, yes. I know that it's not the way the world really works, but I think these movies yeah, sell yeah. us on that sort of that homey, cozy I mean, little fantasy. And I think that yeah. this movie does it does like. That was one of the things I noted was how it uh, right up from the beginning it establishes the town, you know, and I, it is that yeah. kind of tapestry of the town type of story. You do you do meet the sheriff and the waitress and the and the you know like the 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 cross section of people. Um, yeah. And I I don't know I always like the, the reverend. We haven't talked about him that Del Close plays. Um, yeah. That's a cool character too. Um, and I, I had I had not forgotten that ending. I had knew there was something with him at the end, but I had forgotten the specifics of it. I Ooh. love that ending. So good. It is so it's... clever and so fun. <laughs> and it hints at a sequel that would be fun <clears throat> to see, but it also yeah. is just the perfect, especially if, in our uh, current moment, the picture, here's a person who's like a crazed fundamentalist, yeah. and they've got the, they are the one that can unleash the madness that, that could destroy us. Yeah. You know? That's a fantastic it's... ending. Felt very like Thanos, like I just yeah, like I he's a swap. survival preacher, but he's actually the guy who's got yeah. the glove. <laughs> he's yeah. like, look, half of these people should get out of here so that so that the other half that lives can appreciate. It's like, whoa, 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 what? What are mm-hmm. you talking about? Just very, very interesting stuff. I I really enjoyed it. I'm gl- I'm glad that I'm glad that you picked it. I'm, I'm glad that you picked it. It was the other thing I, I loved about like um so many movies do this and we talk about many of them on this podcast but like when i mentioned the idea of like you get the intro- introduction really quickly to um to paul the the, the don of the leech character it does that doing that thing where you think that's the hero of the movie oh yes for a good run and then he's gone he's dead he's mm-hmm. killed very brutally killed and i you know that's that you know whatever the, the expectation or like playing with what you think is going to be our hero versus, you know, the, uh, the, the, the bad guy on a bike, you know, or, or, or even Shawnee Smith yeah. is really the hero yeah. Yeah. Uh, of the movie. But it's just like, it's it, that, that little bait and switch of like who you think you're supposed to be following. Um, 
through the movie. I, I love that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, I, even though I find the Kevin Dillon character to be a little hard to take in some ways, that mullet is the, is actually scarier than the blob. Um, that, that halfway through the movie, he should have started fighting the blob with his hair. It should have started growing too. He's like, hold on, and he eats a sandwich, and then his hair gets bigger. Um, but no, I, I I think that that um, the structural idea that at the beginning we see him trying to jump on his bike and he doesn't quite get there, and then later he has to do the jump. It's like that's so on the nose, yes, but it's yes. it's structure. That's what I was talking about before when I was saying like screenplay structure. I just like when I see something that knows what it's doing, and maybe that's some some Frank Darabont, maybe that's just a little bit more of a classic tone, a little old fashioned approach, but I like those sort of elements. Um, and I can, I, I think it's an interesting attempt to turn Kevin Dillon into a leading man type of actor. I just think, I just don't know that I buy him as like the smartest guy in the room, no matter what the situation is. I don't think he's bad in this role though. I just think he's an odd, it's an odd looking, like him and Shawnee Smith, like they're styling could not be more painfully 1988. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but I think the, Don the Donovan Leach turn is one of like three, I thought. Like, the, you know, I was ready for the kid. I, I always remember the kid dying. Um, uh, whatever his name is. Uh, does he have a, an annoying little kid name? Is he like Jimmy or Timmy or something? <laughs> anyway. Uh, he, yeah, yeah. Eddie, I think. I think that's Eddie Beckner. Eddie? Um. But um, the um, but the, the the Donovan Leach death, uh, yeah, it's like it's the movie really telling you. It's like again, we've seen movies that have tried to do this where they they keep you on your toes by by twisting things around. But that's such a well done thing. But I also think the um, the waitress and the sheriff dying the way they die is sort of yeah. a similar kind of because you think the sheriff is coming to maybe save her or maybe we're going to see him show up not in time but he's still going to be a character but the fact that the sh the sympathetic sheriff kind of dies off screen and then is revealed uh as dead when he shows up inside the blob yes. as the blob is killing the waitress who's hoping the sheriff is going to come save her and you kind of like these characters because they had a little thing i don't know i just feel like the movie put a little effort into developing those characters so that you would be surprised totally when yeah. they die um and i think that that's a mark of the uh i don't know the cleverness of this movie and um i even think even though now we're waiting for the government guys to be bad i think that too qualifies as a twist especially if you were remembering the original blob and you're not expecting it to be like a man-made uh disaster right. um so and i liked the guy what was his name who plays the um the government guy what was his what's that actor's name the doctor yeah the uh joe Mos seneca hmm? oh Oh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of Dr. Oh, Meadows. Oh, yeah, 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 Joe Seneca, Dr. Meadows, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I just feel like that's a character actor who I've seen do a lot of different things, and I've never seen him play, like, the the mad scientist heavy in something. Yeah, I, I imagine yeah. that might have been fun for him. Um, he really throws himself into it. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. It's a great pick. Yeah, so fun. We just well, got blarbed. I was going to say, like, what are other movies that have to do with, like, goop or, or, or something goop. that's not a, a creature? And I was trying to, th and the stuff was the one I was going to think of. And the other one, even Oops. though it's not quite the same thing, but we just talked about the substance last week. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, big booty Brazilian orgies. That has a lot of. <laughs> sure it's got a lot of stuff. Going got a lot on. of goo and stuff on. Which, which volume? <laughs> <laughs> Volume one. Oh, you volume like volume one? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was more of a. <laughs> I was just curious. Yeah. Um, I think man. it's your pick now, Ronald. You get yeah, to pick okay, the next okay. required. So I was thinking, um, Max Julian. Uh, I only know it's synonymous with um, the Mac. Uh, and I love that movie. It's a black exploitation movie. And I was like, why don't I dig into something a little deeper and see if I can find something that he's done that's not super well known. Um, and he did a Western in 1974 called uh, Thomasine and Bushrod, uh, which I'm interested in. I, you know, I like Max Julian. I like his his calm demeanor in the Mac. And Thomasine and and Bushrod is going to be my pick. And this thing is available for free on Tubi, um, and it looks like it's to rent on all the other services for three ninety nine. But um, 
I've been, you know, since we're getting close to like Thanksgiving and stuff like that, I, I just want to think about some, some, some stories that we haven't heard before. Some, some, some black cowboys. Just give us some black cowboy stories. It's not based on anything real, by the way. But uh, Tom C. Nathan Bushrod. All right, cool. I've never heard of it. <clears throat> yeah, Me either. Yeah, Tubi. Okay. Tubi. Here we come, Tubi. Here you come. Um, uh, what else we got, guys? Uh, anything that you've watched since last recording? I have to say, I haven't really, I haven't really been uh, keeping up myself. So, I don't know what what have you guys seen? Anything? I've continued to love the Penguin, and I have uh, same, continued same. to enjoy the franchise. Franchise, and I guess that's it. Like you said, Steve, you hadn't really watched a lot of movies, and I've been watching television myself. And yeah, like, I finished else? Bad Monkey finally. Okay, what'd you think uh, of uh, Bad Monkey? <clears throat> I loved it, man. I love, yeah. I love, I love that version of Vince Vaughn. Yes, uh, so funny, it's just man. like it's just like a perfect. And John reminder. Ortiz is that the? Yeah, yeah, he's great too. Yeah. I was really, glad. I was so glad that they got to have their little their little yeah, moment, moment in the, the end. Yeah, no, I I think it's a it's a hangout show, and it's a it's characters that I actually love. Totally. Um, and I I think if it had a weakness, it was just that the plot, the importance of the plot, kind of falls away by the eighth or ninth episode. You're like, oh, I'm really just watching this to see how the characters end up. Yeah, but I don't yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. really a flaw. I think that's only a flaw if you're looking at it as like a ten hour movie or something that you're watching if it's season one of a show and if especially if it's going to come back which i kind of hope it does it feels like a show that could come back um it could yeah uh uh i i it just feels like it's yet another show that seems like this should be like a network show this should be like one of those shows like magnum pi or something that just runs for a while because it, it is a vibe as much as it is a story and i think that that's yeah. really fun but yes my favorite vince vaughn anything in a long time yeah man totally cool um what else anything else um loving shrinking season two on apple See, TV. i need to catch up on that i haven't watched any of shrinking yeah. love love it love it um literally that's i think that's all i've watched um ronald have you watched anything I rewatched Infinity War. Uh, oh yeah, we I, talked about that. That I, I walked in when Nikki and Henry were watching Endgame, and it, it yeah. the last the last forty five minutes killed me again. So that's yeah. something I watched. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Infinity War had like a, I, I found like a high frame rate version, it's like sixty frames. It looks insane, but mm -hmm. really fun, man. Like it, it's crazy. Like I was skipping around looking at it. I was like, Aaron, can you see what like sixty frames looks like? That does it mess with you? And she's like, no. And then <laughs> we fast forward it like 20 minutes in and I just like, just to check it. Like, I'm like, this action scene, this is, this doesn't look like a normal movie. Are you, are your eyes seeing it? And she's like, yeah. She's like, this looks really cool. And then she like, <laughs> did, told me to turn it off. And T'Challa came on the screen and I was just like, um, all right, let's watch this. <laughs> let's just finish it. Man, when, um, movie. Watching Endgame when when Black Panther came out of the portal, oh I, god! I was already loving the moment because I had just yeah, seen yeah. the part with the Thor and the hammer. I mean, I always forget yeah. that Captain America getting the hammer is awesome, but Thor saying "I knew it" is the best part of that. I love. Yeah. It. Um, but um, I was like, "Oh, this is oh on your left," and the heroes start showing up, and I was like, "This is so great!" And it was kind of getting me. But then when it's Chadwick, yeah. man, it it kind of. It hurt uh, almost. It's like I'd forgotten yeah. how much like that guy just lit up the screen, and like we so loved good, that character so much at that point, you know. And that was also when Marvel still had the full mojo going in terms of there was a Midas touch sort of to them oh, turning yeah. turning these characters into iconic characters, you know. So yeah, I um, love that. Really. No, I, I enjoy I enjoyed being reminded of that because I've enjoyed Marvel stuff in the years since then, and I even have loved a couple things. But I really do feel like that was a high watermark for not just them, but for like a franchise filmmaking like experiment you know yeah <clears throat> so good man yeah they're yeah they're um, you you say you say his entrance in that but i even go back it, i still feel like civil war civil war oh, oh geez. that, that so fight cool sequence in that. as man. black panther like with captain america and buck oh my god so he just shows up you know he just yeah. shows up you're like oh my god who's this yeah and like just goes toe to toe with these characters you've spent many movies with and you're like, oh wow, he's like formidable. Yeah. He's not fucking around. 
that whole sequence in, in with the with him running after the motorcycle, like on his feet, on his feet, dude. On his when feet. he does the little, t- and he first, the, you know, everything. The, the, yeah, uh, yeah, dude. What a pff, incredible. So good. The, the, you know what? A conversation that kind of hit me hard, like mm. watching that movie pretty recently. Scarlett Johansson and him sitting down, and he, like you know, after the explosion happens, he's like, "I'm gonna kill everything moving," and she's like, "You got it." calm down yeah like it's like a good conversation between a killer obviously this lady's a killer and like somebody who does not want to do this but has to because of his legacy and all this stuff Mm. this real cool conversation between two people who come from different places you know just having this that's what i loved about the mcu man It, it, it just really felt like there was a time where like all these people come from so many different places but they kind of in the middle to you know serve justice in their own way it's mm-hmm. some good old-fashioned main justice <laughs> <laughs> i think about jamie fox's face with this <laughs> good old-fashioned main justice uh but yeah so good man so good so good so good agatha so good. we gotta talk about agatha next week it. which i talk about it man yeah, okay. you. I need to. Okay. I need to watch it. Well, I, I will give you. I will say in a completely non-spoilery statement about Agatha all along. It is a TV show. They successfully made a TV show. Like mm. I think the last one they did that was this successful as a TV show was Wandavision, where yeah. you felt like it had like episodes. Yeah. And like a season. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Not just a yeah. story that was sort of stretched out. And so not perfect. And had some moments that were you know that came off great versus ones that didn't. But like. In the end, it had character arcs and payoffs and setups yeah. that that became important, and it it attached itself to the larger mythos of the Marvel universe in a way that expanded things, but it still managed to be a small, self-contained story. So for those yeah. reasons, it's like if if every Pretty Marvel cool. television show had been this good, we wouldn't talk smack about Marvel television. Yeah, yeah, it had some emotional stakes. Like when you when you figure out all of it, and they. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, this is this is what we want, and it makes sense. Like, if you, th- I, I actually heard an interview with Jack Schaefer, the the creator showrunner, who was also the person behind Wandavision, and yeah. just hearing, I don't know if you ever hear one of those interviews where the person answering questions increases your respect for the project because you're right, like, right. oh yeah, the writers' room really had cracked this sort of, so, uh, to call it self-contained, but it's also kind of a circular story. Like the last two episodes really are paying off questions you might've had since the first episode. Yeah. And I just feel like that kind of structure is something I really like. I mean, a good television season should feel that way. It should feel like it gets to yeah. the end and you're like, oh, I see what they did and not like, huh, okay, that's how it's gonna go. <laughs> and also I think where it, where it, where it's leading is there's this little side story with these characters that feels big because of the characters that it involves, but it's yeah. not like this show needed to bring in a huge cameo to, uh, to make itself interesting that way. And I think that's cool too, so. What do we I have thought, next on I the thought, schedule? What's her name? Jen? What, what oh, is that? Samir Zapata or whatever? What's her name? <laughs> uh, Shamir. Z- yeah. <laughs> I like her. Uh, SNL. Uh, yeah, she was great. I thought. I, found, I, I thought. Samir. Quite... Samir's. Uh, Samir. Uh, Shazir. I don't know, man. I'm no. looking it up. But I, I. She was. She was a little hot for me. I was. I was like, why am I? Oh, uh, Zashir Samata. Okay. Yeah. Super hot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, you know, it's funny. I never like looked at her like that. And then I was like, what, do I, what have I been missing this? On <laughs> I, think, I think like, I have too. I think I've been missing this. Like she, she's just, like, maybe she just found this like comfort. That's this thing, man. Like, you know, when somebody finds their comfort and they know their style and they know like, I'm just I'm just gonna be this person for the rest of my life. So mm-hmm. what's the point? Like I need to get comfortable. She seems really comfortable, and that I, right. I really enjoy. It. I think yeah. a lot of good performers get away from SNL, and you realize they had a lot more to, to right. go to, just going for them as performers than they got to show on that show. It's weird because that show can be such a great showcase for some people, and it can be such a nothing for other people that are talented. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's wild stuff, man. Come on, California. <laughs> That's how we'll close the podcast. Yeah. Fucking... 
Oh, oh, we're talking about geez. the movie industry. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. The film for industry sure. in California. The film clearly, industry. Yeah, clearly. Where oh, we're God, looking to set up our physical office for movie studios. Come on, California. Make more MCU projects. <laughs> Forget about it. God damn it. <laughs> um, I think that's it, guys. I don't know. We don't have much else today. Yeah, yeah I think we're, other, we're I, just, guess, uh... I guess this last week, there's been other things on our minds. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Um... So yeah, moviesmovie.com is the website. You can go there to subscribe to the podcast through any audio podcast platform of your choice. And uh, like Ronald mentioned earlier, the YouTube element, whether you want to go to youtube.com slash podcast to subscribe to the video portion of our podcast feed, or there's an audio portion as well. If YouTube is your thing, anything you want is probably there on that channel. And uh like he mentioned before, keep an eye there because the shorts that we're going to be doing here uh, on the feed, on the YouTube channel feed, um, we're going to have some shorts that we're going to be creating that are unique and exclusive to that feed, um, not a part of the audio feed or anything else that kind of become um, something that you might subscribe to elsewhere. So that'll be a benefit to going to YouTube, hitting that subscribe button, hitting the bell so you get alerted when new things drop because that'll be coming. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll get some of those planned out and, uh, maybe practice or prep for maybe some uh, of these short special episodes or special little mini mini sodes uh, time to the release of some movies that are coming out that maybe we haven't been able to see yet. Like I mentioned, we're going to be able to see Gladiator 2, so we'll have a review for that the week it comes out. But some other movies that we may not get into um, see advanced, maybe we could do some little shorts on um, movies that may pair nicely with those types of films or something oh, yeah. along those lines. Um, plenty of opportunity, but again, if you want to be a part of that or see that, please go to YouTube and subscribe to the channel there. We don't really appreciate it. Um, I think that's it. That's going to be it. As always, thank you so much for listening, and uh, you've made our day. Thanks. Bye.